welcome, welcome, welcome. Your saltwater guy, Captain Dave Hand. Another great podcast for you today. Thanks for joining us. Everybody all over the place, thank you so much for all your support and all your love. I cannot believe the amount of love that I've been given since we did that show up in Orange County. The, the support, the love, the download, the app, every single thing is overwhelming to me, myself. And I just want to keep thanking everybody every day. And once again, I just, today is a, another gratitude day. It's another day to be thankful for everything that you all allow me to accomplish on a daily basis because of you guys all following me, watching me, the whole gang, everything you do for me and Kelly, we appreciate it all and all the love, we feel it. We really, really, really feel it. Today is another phenomenal day down here in Cabo San Lucas. It's like 85 degrees. We already got the air on, if you can believe that, in the middle of March. Air is already on at the house. It's so hot already. I know, real world problems. Gang, what's going on in the world right now is we're going to make it through it. Everybody just needs to relax, take a deep breath. We've seen we've seen this stuff like this before, so I just want everybody to calm down, take a deep breath, kick back, relax, and watch me. I promise I'll do my best to entertain you on this show. And those of you that are listening in your car on Spotify and Apple and Megaphone, thank you very, very much for all your support. The amount of people that are logging in and signing up and doing all the cool stuff to make Kelly and I understand how much you love us. We appreciate it all. Don't forget, Tommy Gomes is coming on the show, gang. We're going to have the fishmonger himself on the show on Friday live. It's going to be a great follow-up to having young Luke with us. Luke did a phenomenal job explaining to you how important the seafood coming out of the United States of America is. And Tommy Gomes is going to follow that up, and then I put out a call to Mr. Marciano. Hopefully, he's going to look at his schedule, and he can join us on the 24th. That's what we're pushing for, so hopefully we can keep this fishmonger thing going on, and we can tell you more about how important it is to make sure that the seafood you're buying, you know the origin of where it comes from, because it's super important to support the commercial fisher fisheries in the United States of America. Even though everybody's in trying to close it all down, we're going to keep trying to keep it open and keep talking about it as much as we possibly can. And today, gang, our show is going to be about what you must. Here we go. We're getting in. The season's already started. There's yellowtail biting down at the Coronados. The halibut are biting at the couple of the Channel Islands. They're all starting to happen. As soon as we get this weather straightened out and we get a couple of days of uh, consistent weather, I know we're going to start to put together some phenomenal fish counts. And the bluefin, the airplanes are already seeing them. There's bluefin in local waters. There's bluefin down below the border all the way stretched all the way down to, to uh, Cedros Island. So things are getting ready to get ready to start happening, gang. It's just about the weather and making sure that we get some calmness. Marley's up there in between the vines, hiding by the box there, looking out here to make sure you're all watching. Those of you that like my monkey, just keep an eye out. Marley's very active today. He's having a very, very good day. Something about monkeys is they, they're just like people. There's one day they're not, they're feeling down and gloomy, and the next day they're feeling all fired up, and today Marley's super fired up. So keep your eye out for him. You see him running around back there somewhere. You never know when he's going to pop out of that box up there. That's his little house Kelly built for him. But today we're going to talk about how important it is to make sure you have all the things to keep you legal when you're out there fishing on your boat. We did this show last year and we did it. I think I ended up doing it three times last year and people were still getting tickets from the California Fish and Wildlife for not having some of the essentials that you must have on your private boat. We're going to talk to you private boaters today, but also those of you that go on the sport boats. This is good information for you to have, too, because I guarantee if you go on the sport boats, your friends invite you to come with them on their private boats. And these are things you need to have because when they decide to come on the boat, they're going to write tickets to everybody, not just the owner, but everybody involved in the act of fishing on your private boat. So we're going to delve into that today. That's what today's show is all about. Don't forget to send us stars. That shows us your love. 
throw those stars to us over on Facebook, on Instagram, or excuse me, on uh, TikTok. You can sh throw us your uh, tips. And on YouTube, you can show us your uh, your love with the uh, with the uh, presents. I think it's called presents or bun or badges or something over there. But everybody, we appreciate everything you do. The amount of stars we've been getting lately is astronomical, and I appreciate everything everybody does for us. Thank you very very much, everybody. And uh, as we go into this here, yeah, we're. Jim and those of you that are talking about what's going on, I know it's the banks. It's crazy. I know that. We're going to stay away from that topic. If you want to do that, go watch the Lion News. They'll be more than happy to bring you down. We're not going to talk about any of that crap. We're going to talk about how much fun fishing is and getting out on the ocean and doing that fishing thing and how important it is to make sure you have all the proper things. First of all, gang, and this is imperative, go to the Fish and Wild. This is going to save you so much stress and anxiety. Go to the Fish and Wildlife's website right now and get on their website and go to the go to the area for buying your California fishing license and download that onto your phone. Put it on there so that it's on there whenever you go fishing from today forward. Watch, I'm going to tell you why. You're like, I already got my fishing license, Dave. I don't want to do that. Listen, this is going to help you tremendously. It's helped me out many, many times with my, with my uh, charter friends and with my clients and my, my members of my website. This is going to help you all. Listen, please pay attention. And I don't care where you are. Florida, New York, Baja, anywhere where you fish, where you're required to have a fishing license. You need to go on their website right now and you need to download the fishing license part of the website or save it or whatever bookmark it or whatever you need to do to make sure that it is accessible instantaneously you can log on to it because here's what's going to happen and it happens all the time to my members and myself and my charters we're all excited we're going out fishing we thought we've gone over make sure you have a fishing license we thought we have done that a hundred times we get out there we're having a little conversation we're talking hey you got your fishing license. Now we're out on the water. Think about this. And I ask you, do you have your fishing license? Hey, happy Monday, Benny. Hey, Dan, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Every single person that's logged on here, I appreciate all of your views and thank you. But listen, there's Marley jumping around back there. You want to make sure that you have quick access to this fishing license part of the Fish and Wildlife website. It's an app you can download the fishing license app you can download a lot of stuff nowadays but you want to make you have the fastest accessibility to the fishing license thing because here's how dan and kim here's how it'll work dan smith benny you're out on your boat off in the distance you see the fish and water starting to come toward your boat but they're stopping at another boat before they get there you look at your friends that came on your boat and you go do you have your fishing license and they're all uh quick bam you buy their fishing license online right now they they send you an email or a text message bam you got their fishing license before the fish and wildlife get there while you're cruising out you start talking to your friends and they don't have their fishing license or you leave early in the morning or you leave late in the afternoon or late at night and there's nowhere open to buy your fishing license you can buy them online you can get it emailed to you instantaneously from the fish and wildlife and now you're saved You've saved that part of the day. And it, you don't believe it happens. It happens all the time. Take it from someone who fished for a living for the last 49 years. Taking people fishing. That's all I've done my whole life is take people fishing and teach them how to fish. And this fish and wildlife thing, if you don't have your fishing license, it is going to ruin your ruin everything. It's going to ruin everything. They don't have a sense of humor about it. The ticket is mind boggling. The ticket is absolutely mind-boggling. So make sure, and they don't have a sense of humor about it. You don't get a warning. You get a ticket for not having a California, Florida, Montana, wherever you're fishing, you must have a fishing license. That's just the way it is. And now the cool thing in California, it's not a calendar year anymore. It's an absolutely 365 days from the date of purchase. So that's cool. And you can buy your license online. And if you buy a year license, it It'll get mailed to you, but you'll have it on your phone, and that works fine. 
That works perfect. Fish and Wildlife, I promise you, will accept that. If you've purchased the fishing license and you have it in an email or save photo on your phone, it works. And it works every single time. And they won't write you a ticket. But if you don't have one, you're getting a ticket. So that's number one. That is the most important thing while you're listening to me right now. And I don't care if you're in Florida, you're in Miami, you're in California. Go there right now while you're listening and get that on your phone and bookmark it or whatever you got to do to save it so it's instant gratification when you touch that Google search button or however you find stuff on the internet. You have it right there so you can access it quickly because it will save you a, look at there, naughty boy, $715 ticket. Well, you were using two poles. You're a bad, bad, bad human. <laughs> but I'm just telling you, you must have a fishing license, gang. You must have that, and you have to have it in a super. The next thing you have to have on your boat is a measuring device. I don't care if you even keep a fish. I don't care. It doesn't matter. If you are out there on your boat fishing, and I don't know what the rules are, but I know that there's size limits on everything, so I would think that it would be the same there as it is here in California. Fish and Wildlife may not have asked you this time or last time or the next time, but they will one day ask you, where's your measuring device? I know you have a tape measure downstairs somewhere. That's ridiculous. The best thing to do is if you don't want that sticker in plain sight where people can see it, open up your fish box and put it on the inside, the sticker. You can get these stickers at West Marine. You can get them at almost every tackle store. It's a nice sticker that has all the size limits on it. And it's a rule. The sticker is a long ruler. It's usually about 40 inches long. And it has all the size limits on it. And, it, and it's the way to measure your fish. Puff, daddy! There's my buddy, Ricky. Hey, but you listen, it's super important to have that measuring device because that's another ticket that they will write. They might not have written, wrote it to you last time. Think, be thankful. But they will write that. Gang, it's time to get ready to get ready to go fishing because as soon as this rain and this wind stops, it's going to be incredible. In the little patches of niceness down south, they're catching yellowtail at the Coronados already in between the weather. There's catching all kinds of fish at the Channel Islands. Boats have already seen bluefin. Both airplanes have already seen bluefin in our local waters. So everything is going to start real quick. You're going to want to make sure that you get all this stuff taken care of sooner than later. And now is the best time because it is going to rain tomorrow and it is going to rain for two more days. So it's a good time to go gather up this stuff and get it. You don't need to go anywhere. You can order stuff online. A great place to get 99.9% .9 of the things you need. And the next thing super imperative that we're going to talk about is go to Promar Ahi. Dot net. Go to promar or promarahi.com. Go to promarahi.com. Click on the website. You're going to be blown away by all the products they have there and things that are essential that you must have on your private boat. Now, by law, you don't have to have this, but you need to have this if you're using live bait. This bait scoop's incredible from Promar Ahi. It's got an adjustable handle, so it slides out, so you can get to that bait in the bottom of your tank. Or if you drop something over the side, you can scoop it up if it floats with this net. This is a great bait scoop. They have all these bait scoops and everything over at promarahi.com. But listen, the next thing we're talking about, you have to have, but I always have two of these on my boat. I always have two bait scoops because some booger eater is going to throw one over, and then we have the other one for a backup. But you can get these at Promar. This floats too, so it's kind of cool. But you go to Promar, get your bait scoops. Okay, take care of that. Get those. It's super important. But this is the one they write the tickets for. And so many people got tickets in California last year. This is called a landing net. This is required by law in the state of California. You have to have a landing net on your boat. You have to. There's no way around it. This is not a landing net. And the fish and wildlife won't, they'll go, <laughs> good try, bro. Give me your driver's license so I can write this ticket and make sure I get every part of you. They're going to get, they're going to get you if you, but if you tell them your bait scoops, a landing net, this is a landing net. This is by Promar. This is the Pro Mesh series. 
landing net, which is pretty cool landing net because you got to have one. There's no way around it. I don't care if you're Jimmy Decker or, or Jerry or Benny or anybody that fishes on their private boat or on a yacht or on a sport boat. The law requires you have a landing net. All right. So get one today. Go on promarahi.com. Order the Pro Mesh series. It comes with the with the uh, handle that comes off the net. You can put this in your storage area. It's going to go in pretty much everywhere because the handle comes off. Then you can put the handle back on when it's time to net that big whopper fish of your lifetime. This is the Pro Mesh series by Promar. But gang, I don't care where you get it. But if you go to Promar and you buy anything over there, you put in the code YSWG, you're going to get 10% off your... So Promar is probably the best place to go. But if you have an epic amount of money and you don't care, go anywhere and buy your landing net. You have to have it. It's the law. You're going to get a ticket for it. And you're going to remember this show and you're going to go, man, it was raining all day Tuesday and all day Wednesday and I didn't buy my net. Now I've got a giant massive ticket. Because I didn't have my landing net on my boat, which Dave told me I have to have. And I'm not making this up. This is the law. The funny thing about the fish and wildlife, and I'm going to help you out here. When you sign your fishing license, and if it's not signed, once you get it in the mail, you get it, you put it in your wallet, and you're like, I got my fishing license. I'm good. Not if it's not signed. If it's not signed, they will write that ticket. Now, if it's you got your license and it's on your email. They know you purchased it. You don't have physical possession of it yet. You don't have to sign it. We all know that. We all understand that. You don't need to leave that comment. But if you do not have your license signed, they will write that ticket. Here's another thing. Fish and Wildlife really enjoys this ticket because this is an easy one for them. This is a low-hanging low-hanging uh, softball coming down and you got the big bat and you're just swinging at it if you're the fish and wildlife. That lobster card that you have when you go lobster fishing, that lobster card must be fill, filled out. Must be filled out. Everything except how many did you catch before you throw your first hoop net in the water. If that hoop net goes in the water and your lobster report card isn't filled out with... The date, location, type of net, all those things are imperative. And if you put down the wrong location number, they're going to write that ticket. If you put down your Redondo Harbor and you're at Catalina, that's a ticket. They're going to write this. That's their easiest one. They come on your boat at Catalina or Long Beach or wherever. They, they're going to ask you for your lobster report cards because they already know you're fishing lobsters. They saw you throw your hoops in the water. Then they're going to go through them and make sure all the squares are filled out. And if they're not, they're going to write that ticket. And that's their favorite. That's an easy one for them. If you're going to Catalina, I'm just going to help you out here. You're going to get boarded. If you're going to Catalina, you are going to get boarded. Why is that, Dave? I love the fish and wildlife. Don't get me wrong. But, man, they can go patrol the front side of Catalina on their beautiful big catamaran in their rubber boat all day. And it's normally flat, glassy, calm. There's lots of beautiful things to look at. And it's a very easy, comfortable day. And they'll, they'll get plenty of tickets written. They don't have to go out and chase poachers in the middle of the ocean where it's rough and gnarly and poopy. They can stay on the front side of Catalina. So I promise you, if you've never been boarded, you are very, very lucky because you will get boarded if you're at Catalina. You're going to get boarded. They're going to come on your boat and they're going to ask to see all these things we just talked about. They're going to ask to see your measuring device. They're going to ask to see your landing net. They're going to ask to see your fishing license. You've got to have all that stuff on the boat. Gang, okay, don't forget to download my app because this week, this week, on Friday during the show with Tommy Gomes, the fishmonger, Kelly Girl's going to pop in here and she's going to give away a Your Saltwater Guide sweatshirt because it's going to be cold all through April, I promise you, if you've watched the weather at all. We're going to have a windy, windy April. 
and you're going to need a sweatshirt. So she's going to give away one sweatshirt to one lucky downloader. All you got to do, the, the, uh, the QR code is up there in the left-hand corner of the video here on, tick, on Facebook and YouTube. Hit that, U, that uh, QR code. Those of you on TikTok and Instagram, all you got to do is go to your saltwater guide and download the app on your app store, either the Google Play Store or the App Store. Download the app. Download, and if those of you that have already downloaded the app, now go download the app on your iPad or on your laptop or whatever you use. Download the app. It's going to qualify you all to win that t-shirt or that sweatshirt. Hey, Marley. There he is. He wants to make sure you get a sweatshirt. But gang, it's super simple. And we always are giving away stuff. We gave away thousands of dollars worth of stuff at the Pacific Coast Sport Fishing Show. And we're going to keep it going. Download the app. It's free. Download the app. And then you may decide to sign up because you're tired of sucking at fishing and you just want to be better, sign up for the app. It's pretty cool. I guarantee I'll never let you down, everybody. The QR code's blocked on Facebook for you. Well, then, Paul, just go to your store, your Play Store or your App Store and type in your saltwater guide. Super simple. Just type in your saltwater guide. All right? Type it in. So if you want to offer stuff on my channel, you need to call me, 949-374-0786. We'll help you out, but you don't get to, you don't get to do things for free. 949-374-0786. But you don't get to get on there and do that. That's not how it works here. We don't allow any negative in our shows, and we don't allow anybody promoting any products on our show. Sorry, gang. That's just the way it is. Try try that over on Joe Rogan's. Let me know how that works out for you. But gang, these are the things that are super important to have on your private boat that are the law. Now let's get into the things that aren't required by law, but you, you better have them. You better have needle nose pliers, okay? And you better have more than one pair because... These things are crucial for, like if you see my needle nose, this is from wrapping the braided line around it when I'm tying my knots and pulling on it tighter. They got a very good set of cutters on them. These are a great pair of needle nose pliers. These are Stanley stainless. These things are great. These things work flawlessly. They work perfect. You got to have a couple pairs because what's going to happen is one of your friends are going to drop your pair over, your favorite pair, they're going to drop them over the side. So make sure you have at least two pairs of needle nose pliers. Next thing you want to have is a very, very, very good set of dikes. High end, super nice, super good pair of dikes that cut wire. Very, very simple. Those don't ever go out on the deck. Those stay inside of a area where they won't get rusty and they're gonna stay clean. Why do I want a very, very good pair of wire cutting dikes? Because if you fish at any amount of time out on the water, there is going to be a time where you are going to bury a hook in your hand or your some part of your body or one of your friends are. That's why you must have a very, very, very good pair of cutters, wire cutters, dikes we call them. You want a very good pair so that if that happens and you push that hook through, you can cut it off simple. You're not using a pair of plier. You're not jerking on it because it's already going to hurt bad enough. So make sure that you have a pair of wire cutter dikes. They got to be heavy duty. You're going to be cutting through hooks and it's going to happen. It happens more time. And if it's never happened to you, then it's going to happen tomorrow because the odds are not in your favor if it's never happened to you. I've done it. I've hooked, I've run hooks through myself so many times and had to cut it through. And I've always been very, very thankful to have that pair of dikes, that pair of wire cutters that were sharp and worked flawless. My hooks are always super sharp. I have a really good hook sharpener on the boat whenever I go. My good friend, Steve Lasley, he always says that that hook sharpener is the thing that's made him the superstar that he is because when those fish even get close to the hook, they're hooked. Your hook should always be super sharp. We haven't done that show. We haven't talked about it, but you should have a very good hook sharpener on your boat. And anytime you're putting lures out to troll behind your boat, those hooks should be super sharp, super sharp. 
okay? But here's, here's another thing you gotta have is a fillet knife. You gotta have a fillet knife on your boat and you should have two because someone's gonna drop one over and you don't want your fillet knife to be your bait knife. The, the knife that you use to cut up your bait should not be the knife that you use to fillet your fish. Your fillet knife should be stored somewhere where it stays dry. It's not all rusty. It's going to be clean. You should always put a little bit of oil on it when you're done using it. Just wipe the blade off with a little bit of oil if you're keeping it on your boat because of the fact that it will get it will get wet and it will get rusty and then it's a mess. And even really good quality knives still get rusty. So make sure that you have your fillet knife kept somewhere. Don't use your fillet knife as a bait knife. Get some less expensive knives to use as your bait knife. What do you mean by bait knife, Dave? I mean the knife that you use to cut up your squid or cut up your chum or cut up anything on the boat. Use it to cut line with whatever. Don't use your fillet knives to cut stuff. Your fillet knife should simply be used to fillet your fish, period, and then put away. Then this one's huge, and I've seen this more times than I'd like to admit, and, I, and I'll admit most of the time it was my fault because I didn't do my due diligence and ask before we left the dock. Get some Ziploc bags. Get some bags to put your fillets in. Get some bags to put your fish meat in because now you're a member of my website or you watch me all the time, and now you actually catch fish when you go fishing, and you're going to want to take those fish home and eat them. Why? Because you... Like we talked with Luke the other day, it's so important to know where your food comes from. That's why Luke's so successful on his YouTube and TikTok and Facebook channels is because he's teaching people where their food comes from. There is no better place than coming from the end of your line and then filleting your fish and taking it home and eating it. So make sure you have fillet bags, make Ziploc bags. Those of you that own a boat, Every time you go to the store, you should buy another box of Ziplocs. That way you have enough because you always forget. Hey, Marley, Marley's checking it out. Yeah. Marley wants to make sure you have your fillet bags, your Ziploc bags or however you do it. Because if you have, let's just say at home, you have a vacuum packer. Great. But on the boat, you're going to want to process your fish and get it ready to take home to, to vacuum pack it. When you get home, then take it out of the Ziploc bags and Simply vacuum pack it into usable sizes, but to get it from the boat to your house, Ziplocs are the best, easiest way to do it, but you always want to make sure you have enough. I've been on too many boats too many times where we didn't have anywhere to put the, the fillets, and it makes me feel really bad when you put it in the trash bag. 99.9% .9 of the trash bags today are scented so you don't smell the garbage, and then you're throwing your fish in there. It's just a mess. Get yourself some fillet bags. That's imperative. And then, while we're sitting here talking, if your boat is dirty, if your boat is not clean, it's time to clean your boat and get ready for the season, gang. You got to get everything ready. We already talked about maintenance a couple weeks ago and how important the batteries are. But get your boat cleaned up. Don't let your boat be a, a mess. It's got all this rain and all this wind and all this stuff that's happened. If you haven't checked your boat out in a long time, it's time to get out there and get it cleaned up. Go through all those boxes of hooks that you have. Listen, this is going to blow your mind. You're going to open up these boxes of hooks that you've had on your boat since last year during the season. And when you open them up, they're all going to be rusty. If you got rusty hooks, throw them in the trash. They're done. You're over. You're not going to use a rusty hook. You're not going to use it. You're not going to give it to your friends or your family when they come on your boat. So what are you saving them for? Go through all your tackle centers right now before we got... Two and a half weeks before all holy heck's going to break loose as far as fishing goes. Go through all those boxes. Go through all that stuff. Get everything straightened up. Get all your tackles sorted out. Get rid of all the rusty hooks. Get rid of all your lures with rusty hooks on it. Change the hooks out. If you don't know how to do it, take them to your local tackle store and ask them to change the hooks out. They can do it. They know how to do it. But you don't want rusty hooks on your lures because you don't know... What, how long is that hook going to last? You might hook the fish of your lifetime. You might hook your big white sea bass or your big yellowtail, and then your rusty hook breaks in half. This is the time to take care of all that stuff, gang. It's super imperative that you do that. You're going to, you're all, those of you that are listening that actually follow my advice are going to go down there on your boat today or tomorrow, and you're going to go, all these hooks that we bought last year are all rusty. 
Yeah, because they got wet, gang. This has been the wettest winter we've ever seen in Southern California. It's going to rain again tomorrow. All that moisture is going somewhere, and it's going onto your hooks. And if you're using the bronze or the black hooks that I talk about so much, and you're I'm not talking about your big Viking where everything's hermetically sealed inside and it doesn't get wet. I'm talking about 99.9% .9 of us that have a Wellcraft or a Parker. Or we have something that's susceptible to weather. All those hooks and all that tackle and all that stuff you have that's just a big knotted up mess that, oh, we'll deal with that on the way out the next time. You never do. You never do. This is when it's time. Right now, it's time to get off your lazy butts and get down there and sort out all this stuff so you're ready. So you're ready for whatever is going to happen. And go through all of you with your marlin lures that are already pre-rigged with that line on them and everything. That's not how you store marlin lures, gang. If you go on any boat, anybody that fishes marlin for a living or anybody that fishes marlin all the time, you want to go... Look at that. They don't have their lures rigged up for more than a few days at a time, and then they re-rig them all. The line doesn't come off that lure when they pull it out of the bag like, like a spring. They pull the lure out of the bag, then they rig it. And if you don't know how to rig it, clip all the crap off that's been on there for years. The, the line's all looking like a spring. It's time to get rid of all that. You do not want that dragging behind your boat when you hook that big blue fin or you hook your marlin or whatever you accidentally hooked, and it's the time in your life. Because if you're putting them out there with that leader that's been on there for a year, two years, or five years, then you're going to accidentally catch a fish because you're not actually involved in the act of fishing. You're just out there driving around, going through the motions, but you're not doing it proper. Your lures should never be re-rigged up for more than a month at a time. You got to re-rig them. And if you caught a fish on it, you got to run your fingers down that, that leader line, if you feel nicks and frays in it, time to go. You got to get rid of that stuff. Gang, go on any real nice yacht that the captain fishes for a living his whole life. And look, they don't have their lures pre-rigged. They have the ones that they rigged up for the day they're going fishing. But if you look in underneath their couch or wherever they store all their lures, you're going to see the lures in bags with nothing hooked on them. Just the lures. Just like your albacore feathers or your tuna feathers. They're all clipped off. They're all re-rigged before they put them out there. And it matters. Like I always say, everything that we talk about on this show matters more than you can imagine. And if you don't do all the things, then you're just being lazy. Why do you want? And also, if you don't have a fillet knife or if you don't have bags to put your meat in, or if you don't have the proper, you've already decided that you suck. Why are you even going out there if you've already decided that you're not going to catch anything? I, w I don't want to go with you. If you're not confident and you don't have everything you need to be successful out there, if you didn't go through your time, if I get on your boat and I look and all your stuff's rusty, I already know you've already planned on not catching anything. You haven't done your due diligence. You haven't done what it takes to make sure that you're totally prepared. You will be shocked. What? And any of you, we talk about this a lot. Any of you have any rods or, or uh, tackle that's rigged up right now? Why? You're not fishing. Why is it rigged up? Well, I left it rigged up since the last time I went. Well, you don't even know what's going to happen when you go back out next time. Let's just pretend like you went out three weeks ago fishing when, and you didn't really catch much because the weather sucks and the fishing was terrible. And you left your rig tied on you left your hook tied on you left your sliding sinker your lure whatever you left it tied on to your is that ridiculous go look around at your stuff every one of those rods you see up there all the stuff you see that none of my stuff has a real hook to it and i fish all the time the very first thing i do when we're done fishing for the day as we're driving back and i know i'm not going out i'm done if i'm on a three Day in a row deal, my rods stay rigged up. On the last day, on the way in, I cut all the garbage off, throw it all in the trash, all of it, except the sliding sinkers. Hooks are done. Once they've touched the water, they're done. There's no reason to hang on to it. They're going to be rustier than heck because that's how they're designed. Don't forget to leave stars here if this makes any sense or if you enjoy my show. It's just like tipping your waiter or your waitress. 
leave me a tip if any of the stuff I talk about sounds interesting or smart. Leave a tip, please. Make sure you leave them. But listen, there's no reason to leave your stuff rigged up. My reels come off my rods. My reels go into my backpack. I spritz them off. If This is what's going to blow your mind. If there isn't running water on the boat, if there's not a hose that I can use fresh water, I'll grab a water. I know I'm a bad human, but I'll grab a water bottle and I'll rinse my reel off. Then I'll wipe it off with a, with a towel. Then I'll put it in my backpack and I'll do that to my reels before I put them away. I might waste two bottles of water. Oh, well, I'm a bad, bad man. But I'm going to take all this stuff off. I'm not leaving them rigged on. Because when I go, let's say my buddy Pete Grossbeck calls me tomorrow and says, hey, Dave, you want to go fishing? I guarantee I'm not fishing for what I just fished for in Lopez Mateo because we're not going to go snook fishing and grouper fishing. We're going to go out big game tuna fishing or something. So I'm not going to have the rods that I thought I could have rigged up. I'm going to change it out. I'm going to put a different reel on. I'm going to put heavier line on. I'm going to get one of my heavier rods. That's what's going to happen to you. All that crap you got tied on, that's lame. That's lazy. We don't want to be lazy when we go fishing. Also, like I was sharing at the, hey, Marley, he's just putting on a great show. For everybody that likes to watch my monkey. Yep, that's my rescue monkey, Marley. He is a marmoset. He's the smallest monkey in the world. That's as big as he'll ever get. His head is the size of my thumb. And that's my little buddy. He is my pal. He is, really, he loves Kelly more than me, but that's okay. But like I said on at the show, gang, from this point forward, every single thing that you do matters. And if you approach it lazily, you're not going to catch. And if you, if the day you go fishing is the day you think that you're supposed to go drinking, then you're not getting this fishing thing. Going fishing is hard. It's not easy. When you go fishing with me, it's not a nice relaxing day on the water. I'm on a mission to catch fish. I want to catch fish worse than any single person on the boat because I love to catch fish. So I'm going to work my butt off to make sure that I find some fish to catch. I'm going fishing. I'm going to make sure that I, oh, cool, Brad, thank you. And I always have a clean show. We never, we never say any bad words. You can always have your children watch. I promise. I will never, ever say a bad word. That's why my shows are so clean and so watched. But gang, it is so unbelievably important to understand that if you're approaching this in a lazy way and you, you're going to get a six pack or a case of beer or something and that's what you think fishing is all about, then you're missing it. That's not what it's about. It's about going out there on the water and experiencing the whole thing and working hard at being successful. It is super important to work hard and be successful. Last Thursday, I, I don't know if I said a bad word. It was... It was not meant to be. You'd have to show it to me four by four because I don't remember ever saying a bad word, but you have to show me. There he is right there. So be diligent in when you go fishing that you're going to go fishing for fish and forget about going drinking that day. That's If you want to go drinking, go charter a bar. That's what I used to tell all my charters all the time when they would come on the boat and make sure, oh, I got to make sure you got enough beer. Well, Go to the bar. We don't need a bunch of drunks on the boat. And we're not going fishing. We're go I mean, we're not going drinking. We're going fishing. So it's imperative that you make sure that you understand that fishing isn't easy. It takes work. you got to be diligent when you're out there. Pull the anchor. Reset the anchor. Stare in the binoculars. Change your hooks. Change your line. Change everything that matters. Go through all your stuff. Take some time out of your busy day. Look through everything we're talking about. Make sure that all your stuff isn't rigged. If you got stuff in the corner that's rigged up with hooks on it, yeah. And the only rod we got over there that even has line running through it is the Sabiki rod because you know how hard that is to run the line back through it. So I just leave the braided line going through it with the swivel on the end. But that's the only rod I have that's rigged. If you don't know what a Sabiki rod is when you're over at Promar, Ahi, the website, promarahi.com, and you're looking at these landing nets and everything, you can check out the Sabiki rod. It's a pretty cool unit. We'll talk about it on another day on another show, but that's the only rod in my arsenal that's rigged all the time because it's just too hard to 
put the line through it. Other than that, none of, none of the other rods are rigged up because it doesn't, I just don't know what's going to happen when I go out tomorrow. I have a pretty good idea, but I don't know. When I get to the bait barge, the bait's going to be a different size than it was last time. So every, there's no reason. We don't even, we, when we're leaving Newport or Dana Point or San Pedro or San Diego, we put the rods together. We put the reels on them. We string the line through all the guides. We run it down. We have the braid set in there. We don't tie our leader on until we get to the bait barge and we see what the bait's like. Then I tie on the leaders because I know if it's big sardines or anchovies or mackerel or what they have at the bait barge, then I start putting on the leaders. Then I start putting on my hooks. And I always have a plethora of hooks with me. All the different sizes I'm going to need from a size four to a size six odd because I know that that'll clever what kind of bait they have at the bait barge. But the last thing I'm going to do is go wheeling up to the bait barge with all the stuff rigged up thinking we're going to have anchovies because we had anchovies yesterday. And then I pull up there and all they got are big sardines. Now I got to cut all my hooks off and tie on different size hooks. It's, it's imperative that you are totally prepared and totally willing to spend the whole day working on catching fish. It's not a relaxing day. I've said that so many times at the show. It, when you go fishing with me, it's, we're going fishing. We're going to go try to catch fish. I am laser beam focused on trying to catch fish for you when I'm out fishing on our boat. And I'm laser beam focused about catching fish when I go fishing. When I go fishing with me all by myself, the only thing I can think about is how can I trick these fish into eating my lure or my bait or my fly when I go fly fishing. It's a lot of work, but I pay attention and I want to be successful when I go. So these things are all the things you need to have on your boat, need to be aware of, need to make sure that you take care of. I want to help you all out today. Turn off the news. Remember, they're all lying to you. Don't forget to make sure that you're ready to watch the show on Friday. Set your alarm. Tommy the Fishmonger is unbelievable human being. He has a TV show. He's super unbelievably nice human being. We're going to have a great time sitting down, talking to each other. And then hopefully the following week we have Dave Marciano. He's checking his calendar and he'll let us know. We'll let you know tomorrow or the next day. But thank you very much once again for watching our show. Thanks for watching my little monkey jumping around the back. Thanks for all of the things you do for us every single day. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Michael, sign up to my website. Download my app. Gang, download, download, download the app, please. Download the app. It helps the algorithm. It pushes it up. It's free to download. And also, you might find out that you actually learn stuff on the app. Download the app. What's the app? Go to the App Store or Google Play and type in your salt water guide. Michael Collier, call me, 949-374-0786. We'll answer your question offline. Gang, thank you all for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed this show. I hope you learned something. I hope you don't get caught out there without the essentials that you must have. I don't want to hear anybody on the show here in the next couple months telling me you got a ticket for not having a landing net or a measuring stick or a fishing license. I will see you all tomorrow. We'll have another great show. Thank you very much for joining us.